Hello and welcome. My name is Doug Wilcox and I would like to talk to you about my watch collection. Like many watch collectors, I obviously have a love for watches. I have roughly 30 of them. I'm going to show some of my key ones and I'm going to show them in three different categories. Uh, as you see here on the table, these are quartz watches. We're going to cover those first. Uh, in the second segment, we will show my mechanical watch collection. And then in the last segment, we will show my automatic watch collection. Um, and then we'll go through the movements uh, as we approach those segments. Uh, one thing about me, I kind of go against the grain as far as watch case sizes. And the reason why I say that is because I know that the status quo that you hear from a lot of people, uh, for those who are into watches, that the normal watch case size should be somewhere between a 39 and a 42 millimeter case. And I say the watch fits the man. Uh, so me, for example, I have somewhere in the neighborhood of an eight and a quarter, maybe eight and a half inch wrist. I have extra large hands, I got big mitts, I got pretty good sized arms. I mean, I'm not a bodybuilder or anything like that, but I'm a pretty big stocky guy. Uh, you know, I'm about 6'2", and I'm about um, a somewhat solid 300 pounds. So for me, I like watches that look proportional on my wrist. And personally, I think watches that are in the aforementioned case sizes the 39 to 42, sit too small on my wrist. I also am very much into sports watches, so like chronographs, aviator watches, uh, diver watches. That's kind of the space that I live in. And so those watches tend to run big anyway. But to give you an idea, I live in the case size neighborhood of somewhere between a minimum of 46 millimeter all the way up in at least one case, a 53 millimeter case. Now, monstrosity, some may think, but I'll show you those watches and we'll talk through each one of them and I will share with you why I selected those watches. So, with that said, let's start with phase one, the quartz watches. And for those of you who know your watches, you will see I have numerous Shinola watches here. Um, but before we get into the Shinola watches, let's get the oddballs out of the way. And I want to start with this one, actually. So this one here is a Ritmo Mundo. Um, this is probably the only dressier watch that I have in my collection. I wanted at least one dress watch. And also something I didn't mention earlier, I want to talk about budget. So I admire high-end watches can't afford them. By high-end, I mean the APs, the, uh, the Vacheron Constantine, the Rolexes, the Patek Philippe's, you know, the, uh, the Luminars, so on and so on and so on. I'm nowhere in that budget space. Um, I live somewhere in the, I would say, 450 to about $1,300 range. So with that said, let's continue on with this one. So this here is the Ritmo Mundo. Um, it's a tank styled watch, meaning it's rectangular, stainless steel case. Uh, for those of you who know your watches, you will notice that this has sort of a Frank Mueller type dial to it. I don't think it's trying to be an homage watch, even though it did borrow the, uh, the dial style of a Frank Mueller. But uh, as far as the case size, if you know the Frank Mueller's, they have more of a tonneau-shaped case where this one is basically a very large rectangle. This is a pretty large watch. So, for example, the, uh, the lug width is about 30 millimeters here. And then I can't even tell you what the case size is from uh, top to bottom, but I think it's in the 50s for sure. But it does look proportional on my wrist. Um, again, I have a large wrist, I have large hands, so I can pull this off. This is not for everyone, it's for me. And I pick watches that suits 
my taste, not the taste of others. So this is the, uh, I almost said Frank Mueller. This is the Ritmo Mundo. It has a double date window at the 12 o'clock position. You have your seconds at the six o'clock uh, position of the dial. Um, it's got a regular uh, pop-out crown to adjust the time. It sits on a black leather strap. It's got branding on the buckle. And you can pick this up, if you know where to look, somewhere in the neighborhood of hmm, $250. If you buy them brand new and retail, it can go as high as $750. You just have to know where to look. Here's a hint. Don't pay retail if you don't have to. Just keep that in mind. All right, next. Let's go with this guy. So this one here is a TW Steel. Um, this is the David Cothier edition. It's done in uh, many layers of grays and uh, silvers and you know matte finishes. It's a very attractive watch in my opinion. It's a chronograph. And there's so much going on on this dial. It's just almost too much to mention. But you can stare at this dial for a good half hour and just pick up on all kinds of little different details. It's a very well put together watch. It's got a lot of heft to it. Um, again, it may look very similar to a uh, an AP, like an offshore or something like that. Um, and even though it may have some resemblance to it, for those who know AP, we'll look at this and know that this is nowhere in the vicinity of an AP, even though it may resemble it. Uh, this one has an anti-reflective sapphire crystal. It is a quartz-driven watch. It's got a bead-blasted case. It's got some nice accents for the pushers. Uh, it's, it's on a nice gray leather strap. And uh, it's got the TW Steel branding on the buckle itself. Um, very, uh, very an industrial-looking watch. And I do get a lot of compliments on it, probably because it does kind of, sort of, resemble an AP, but not, okay, especially with the port uh, port window bezel there that you see here. Uh, but uh, this watch, when it came out retail, was around $1,200. Uh, you can now find these for somewhere around the $300 mark, <clears throat> usually in the four to $500 range. If you know where to look, you can get it a lot cheaper than that. TW Steel. Oh, and by the way, this is a 48 millimeter case. A lot of my watches fall within that range around 47, 48. So I'll mention the case sizes as I go along to give you some kind of a, some kind of a reference. All right. Next, let's get into the Shinolas now. And uh, I'm going to start with the first Shinola I got. No, actually it was this one. <clears throat> so... For those who you of you, for those of you who know Shinola, uh, one of the first models they came out with were, were the Runwell models, which were the forty-seven uh, millimeter non-bezel case um, or non-rotating bezel case, and their other model, which is the one that I was attracted to, was the Sports Chrono. Um, and that came in at a 48 millimeter case <clears throat> with the bezel and the dial configuration you see before you. So this is the 48 millimeter sports chrono. In fact, all of the other channels I'm going to show you are going to look very similar to these. Excuse me. <clears throat> They're going to look very similar to these, um, uh, to this one in different color configurations. The one you see here before you is a gray dial with white numbers around the dial. You have orange accents on the seconds hands. You have a nice rotating bezel. You have a screw down crown. Um, this one sits on an aftermarket gray nylon strap that I bought. Um, I thought it worked well with this watch. Uh, it originally came on a brown Horween leather strap, more like a caramel color, if you will. Um, but I, I decided to go with this one. I think this one has 20, yeah, 24 millimeter lugs. Um, again, it's a 48 millimeter case. Uh, again, 
nice clicky bezel. I mean, not the best in the business, but it's very de decent. There's a sapphire crystal aboard. Again, screw down crown. Nice attractive case back. Nice curved lugs. It sits very comfortable on my wrist. Um, and I know that Shinola in the past um, have caught a lot of flack. So by the way, these are assembled in Detroit. Um, I know they got some flack on the way that they were marketing these watches. And since then, they've corrected that marketing statement about them being hand-built, you know, and, and, you know, all parts were made or whatever in Detroit. They do have a nice story on how, you know, they put together this factory in Detroit. They hired workers from Detroit uh, to assemble these watches. I believe these are very well-built quartz watches. They're solid. They're hefty. They don't feel cheap by any stretch of the imagination, even though I know that a lot of the watch snobs like to uh, pour salt on the Shinola brand name. I don't care. I like them. They appeal to me, and that's why I, I own several of them. So we have the gray with the white, and you have like a brushed stainless steel case on this one. And then we're going to move right along to the next one I bought. Which, is, which was a very sought after one for me. Uh, this is the green one with the white indices, again, with the orange accented hands. This one is on a polished stainless steel case. This one is on a stitched uh, hornween leather strap. As you can see, I like to wear it. Um, again, screw down crown. We got the pushes for the chrono functions uh, and a nice matching green bezel. I love that color. It really pops on that. The, the uh, tone of green that they used is, it, it's, I, I love it. I love the look of that one. All right. Next. I then went out and got a blue and white one. So I love that stark white dial with that deep, rich blue bezel. Again, sapphire crystal. This one is kind of like on a, uh, I guess I'm just going to call it a, sort of charcoal brush finish, if you will. I know that's probably not the right name, but that's what I call it. This one here is on a blue rubber strap, which came with the watch. Uh, chronograph functions again, um, same as the others. You got the date window, by the way, at the six o'clock, which is true on all of the uh, Shinola Chrono Sports, 48 millimeter case. Everything is nice and legible, nice and clean. Definitely love their style. And then finally, well, not finally, the third one we have here is a, uh, a very special edition. And for those Shinola heads that are out there who likes these watches, you might not have seen this one before. And that is just because it was never made available to the public. Uh, rumor has it, the story behind this watch was that this one was actually commissioned and made for the Obama administration when he was in office. Um, this also is a 48 millimeter case. If you notice the colors, it matches the paint job on the Air Force One plane. So you have sort of like that, uh, oh, what's that color? Kind of a teal, not teal, but uh, aqua colored bezel. We have the presidential seal at the six o'clock. And unlike the other Chrono Sports, even though that the bezel is very similar to those, this one is a GMT. You notice the red airplane GMT hand. Again, the presidential seal on the front of the dial at the six o'clock position. Uh, the hands are outlined in the same aqua color to match the paint job of the plane. This one sits on a horror wing leather strap with uh, the matching aqua um, uh, contrast stitching. And then if you flip the watch over, you actually have the presidential seal Air Force One as its case back, as opposed to the normal Shinola one. Again, this was never made available to the public. It never had a price tag on it. Um, I lucked up, and I'm guessing what happened is one of the members of that administration was gifted this watch. They put it on eBay. I saw it, never seen it before, had to have it. We worked out a deal. And here it is. It comes in its own aqua colored box to match the bezel, uh, its own card and paperwork. It is a very limited watch, very rare. Is it worth anything? 
Don't know, but again, it appealed to me. I had to have it. Okay? The Shinola Air Force One. Finally, now I can say finally, the uh, the only Shinola that I actually have on a steel bracelet. Now, this kind of looks like it's titanium, but it's not. It's actually solid, same as steel. It's got a lot of heft to it. There's some sort of a, like a charcoal finish on it. I'm sure there's a name for it. I'm not a watch expert, but that's what I call it. Uh, the numbers around the dial uh, have like a gold tone to it, while the bezel itself kind of gives off a bronze charcoal kind of finish to it. Um, and then you have your black double digit window, digit window. Notice that there's no uh, trademark Shinola orange accents on it. This one is all done in the finish as you see here. Uh, the normal case back on it, uh, we have a double clasp. Again, a nice solid watch. Nice heft to it. I love these watches. I wear them frequently. Um, and there you have it. So that concludes the quartz section of my watch collection. Next, we're going to get into the mechanicals. Be right back. <laughs>